Awesome guys, so we have the piano in place. I'm gonna go ahead and label this as piano. And then we can actually label this as like cadence. I think it's always a good idea to keep your sessions organized by title. I've had tracks where I've had 300 channels and, and trying to scramble to find a single track is, is just a nightmare. So I always encourage my students to uh, keep everything labeled and grouped according to you know what what they represent in the track. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a locator here called start song. Um, just so we know that this is like where it starts and this is the cadence. Um, we actually don't have a cadence in the beginning of the song if you listen to the original again. Uh, but we're going to use this later on, so I'm not going to delete it. So in this video, we're going to work on the second element of the main melody. It's a pluck sound. It's the infamous dead mouse pluck. Uh, very, very simple sound to make. I'm going to add in a MIDI channel and load in Serum. That's my favorite synthesizer. And we're going to create a basic pluck sound. So the idea is we're going to uh, basically low pass and uh, envelope the low pass of a saw wave. And it's easy enough to do that. You're gonna make sure A is checked so we can uh, get the, the saw to go through the filter. We want to turn the filter on, make sure we have Moog Low 12, that's my favorite filter that's in there, and it's by chance the stock filter. I'm gonna reduce the resonance to zero, turn the cutoff all the way down, apply envelope two by dragging it onto the cutoff, and then we're going to make it a pluck shape like this by lowering the sustain all the way down. Let's make this curve just a little bit sharper like that. And I wanna make this a little bit less. Um, I want it to control the cutoff and make it open to a little bit lesser of an extent so we don't get so much harsh top end as it plucks through. You'll see what I mean if I play a note. It sounds very cheesy and uh, very basic, but if I start to close it, a little bit less so. I'm gonna turn this cutoff up a little bit so we, we adjust where the bottom of that envelope's hitting. Maybe we'll do like this, like, I don't know, uh, quarter of the pie kind of shape. That's good. Let's go ahead and open this envelope just a little bit more. Still think it's open just a little bit too much. And that's sounding a little bit better. So like we explained in the previous episode, every single, every single element of the song uses the same chords. So what we're gonna do is take this core piano chords that we've made, hold the Alt or Option key and drag down, and then we're going to kind of simplify this uh, so we have a, I guess, a template to go off of for the rest of the melodic elements of the song. So we're gonna get rid of all these little rhythm sections, go to the core notes, and we're gonna build up the core chords. Let's do legato. So actually this can probably be held instead of being played twice there. Let's solo this so we don't have to deal with a piano blasting in our ears. Let's go ahead and add these back. And if you need help creating these chords, you could just do it as a triad, like we've discussed earlier. It's just a different voicing of the same triad. Here's the actual triad, but we're not using that third note of the voicing. So you should be able to figure out where all of these notes go, like so. This is actually just a duplicate of the previous one. I could have just copied it, but I didn't. Oh well. Now let's just make this one long note instead of two. I'm gonna actually max out all these velocities by holding Command A or Control A to select all and then drag them all the way up uh, just so we have a kind of static velocity for the synths that we're using. I'm gonna click off so it deselects them all, reselect them, and then drag these down so we're not at full velocity. Cool, so we have the core of the chords now. Let's give this a play. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this top section and add in a middle note. 
it's not the right one. I think it's right there. Still not the right one. I think maybe right here would do it. There we go. We have to adjust a few things so it's not sharp or flat. We're actually going for that third note of the chord now, as you can see. There it is, and that's our triad. So for the rhythm for this section, I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate this so we have this, this nice pad version um, for later use in other sounds, but for this, we're actually going to make this an eighth note pluck, um, or a dotted eighth note pluck, I should say, that resets on every bar. Uh, Dead Mouse does this a lot in his stuff, and it's kind of a signature of a lot of the mousetrap artists. So we're going to go ahead with the dotted or I'm sorry, the 16th note grid so we can create dotted eighth notes. And if you remember correctly from earlier, a 16th note, or I'm sorry, a dotted eighth note is three 16th notes together or one eighth note plus a 16th note. So we're gonna do that, one, two, three, and then we're gonna copy it. Just actually apply this groove to all of the chords like so. I'm just gonna duplicate that and just copy them over. And as you can see, it doesn't align quite right, and that's what I mean, resetting on the bar. So wherever this happens, you're gonna want to reset it like so, and go back to where you were. Then we're going to keep copying. I'm basically just duplicating notes now, putting them in place. This is actually the same, so I don't need to, I can just copy this one. Again, everything resolves to that A and F, as you saw, F and A right here. And then I think this is just a duplicate of itself, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this and then paste it over there, or hold Command D and duplicate it over. So this is what we have so far. Maybe we can open it just a little bit more. I want to widen this up just a tad, so instead of using one unison or one voice centered in the mix in mono, I'm going to go ahead and add a few more voices, let's say six or seven. Seven's better because you have a note that's constant in the middle, keeping the same, um, keeping the same pitch as the, the perfect pitch of the note. If you use an even number, you, you don't get that. As you can see right here, these are all representative of the pitches of each of the voices and the yellow one in the center in the odd numbers is a pitch that's perfect to whatever key you're playing um, whereas in eight it plays two keys that are slight or two voices that are slightly detuned so i'm going to use an e odd number i'm sorry and then maybe we'll go for a slight detune like maybe a nine and see how this sounds Cool, that stereo separated it a lot actually, I like that. What I'm gonna do now is add a ping pong delay and we'll do it to like a four. Maybe we can try the two instead. And again, same thing from before, we don't wanna cloud up the top end too much, it gets too busy and in your face. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down to like the mids or the lows. I think I like the four better actually. I think there's one more note to these chords that we're missing and it's like the the um, the seventh, I believe. Or maybe we can just have that droning E on top of everything. Something similar to that at least. Let's get that dotted eighth rhythm going. Maybe down to that C and then to the, the D and then back up to the E. Let's try that. I'm trying to add some upper harmonics to this to make it a little bit more interesting. Upper notes, I should say. 
pretty sure that's what I did in the original. A little too much delay. And then let's put on some reverb just for good measure. Set it back into the background just a little bit. And this one I don't want to shine or shimmer too much, so I'm gonna actually bury some of the top end. We're gonna make this like maybe seven kilohertz. 7,000. I guess seven kilohertz, 7,000 hertz. Again, keeping that mix relatively low so we don't drown out the sound. We could go for it, but that's not the effect I'm going for for this. Let's go ahead and hear what that sounds like with the piano now. Just a little bit too much decay time and maybe a little bit too much reverb there. Dial this in just a little bit more. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a similar thing with the compressor on this one. I wanna catch some of the small nuances of the reverb and the delay and bring them up to listening level. I'm actually going to bury the top end of this just a little bit more, again to go back to that psychology thing I mentioned in the first episode. I don't want this to be the forefront or the focus of the song, so I'm going to bury a little bit of the top end to push it back into the mix. We perceive high frequencies as close to us and in our face, and I don't want this to be the focus of the track, so let's do that. actually open up this filter in the original song so we can go ahead and do that here I'm gonna apply a cutoff modulation macro we can call this cut and then I like to do it this way so that I can automate more than one thing at once in the event that I want to later on down the line so we can go ahead and move this a bit and then we can enable automation mode we can do that with a on Ableton if your keyboards not on if your keyboards on then it plays a note but if it's off by toggling with the M key, as you can see right here, M, toggle, keyboard, off, you can then toggle your automation lane. And like I said, we want to wiggle this a little bit so it, it selects it. Easier to do that than to go through the chain here. And then I want to open this up and this last bar, like so. I think I may have used the Serum Reverb in this pluck instead of the Valhalla. Let's go ahead and try this. Same idea, small decay, small size, really low mix amount. And I actually want to open this EQ up and that last section so we can let some of that high end through um, in the part where I want it to become the forefront. So I'm going to go ahead and move the frequency knob here and then we're going to automate it. Like so. And that is essentially the pluck of the song. In the next episode we're going to add the bass line for the section of the song the verse or the the, um, the breakdown, if you will. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting, and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.